Okay, so you're ready to try out rubrics, but don't even know where to start. Well, where you have to start is getting it set up. So I like to set mine up ahead of time. So you go to grade setup. And then on the right menu at the top, you'll see scales. And then you will see rubrics. Okay, you can see the ones that I have created. So you can, uh, if you click on the wheel, you can copy to a course, you can edit, you can save it to your resources. All right, lots of options, but we're gonna create a new one. So we're gonna create a new rubric. It's gonna start with this default, okay? So let's do, uh, let's do participation, okay? So let's see, we'll say responding in chat, okay? And we'll leave this like this. And now we're gonna add a criteria down here. So if you click this, now we have a new one. The important thing to know is that this copies exactly what was above it when you enter it. So, so say um, appropriate conversation. And we're going to simplify this rubric to simply this. A3, change the number a two and a one, you could say all appropriate conversation. And I can't type right now, so let's fix that. Let's see, needed a reminder. And we'll say needed more than one reminder. Okay, now again, remember I said when you click the criteria, it's going to duplicate whatever was above it. All right, so there we go. And so we'll say responding in chat, appropriate conversation, and we'll say um, participating in conversation. All right, so now I'm going to click. I can do this. I can add another spot at any point. I'm going to add one here. Okay, so unmute to participate verbally. Okay, participate but only via chat, okay, little to little participation, and then we'll say no participation, okay? It doesn't really matter what my point value is over here. You can continue to add in between here, and then you can click create. Once you create it, here we are at the bottom of my list, I can copy it to courses, I can delete it, I can go in and edit, okay? And you can add as many as you want. I have some that are specific for projects that I've done, okay? I have one that is specific for taking notes. You design the rubric that best fits, okay? I have a really simple one here. It's complete or incomplete. It's complete, incomplete. That's it, real simple. Okay, that's one simple version. I have this one, a scale of zero to four. Okay, um, so you could very simply grade something excellent, good, satisfactory, needs improvement real quick. It doesn't have to be a complicated rubric. Okay, but the more specific that you get, the more information students do receive. Okay, so when I look at my class notes rubric, it deals with when it was submitted, this requirement about putting their name, legible, accuracy the amount of content, the graphics, which includes underlining and highlighting, and then effort, okay? And for my tissue box project, the rubric is extensive, okay? Because they needed specific things for specific um, slides and specific content. So it's much more um, intense, but very easy to grade from a teacher perspective, okay? So make sure that um, you are making rubrics that are appropriate for what you are doing, okay? So here's one about plant and animal cells, and real simple, here's the cell, they named it, 
here's the or the function did they name it the organelle did they name it the function did they list it okay so really simple um, easy to grade in terms of assessments a single question in terms of assignments it could be a whole project okay you can do it for essays and once you have the rubric built you can um, modify it change it or whatever you want but don't modify it if it's already attached to um, another assignment. What you would want to do is um, either copy it to your sandbox course so then you could edit it and send it back or save it to your resources and do the same thing. Okay, so again, here is a sort of a short version of how to create rubrics because they are amazing, make grading so easy, and give students that feedback that they really need about how they could improve.